Another catalyst of ozone degradation are molecules known as CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons. These compounds, which contain chlorine, fluorine, and carbon, freon is the best known example, were invented in 1930 and, since they are inert, they made ideal replacements for ammonia and sulfur dioxide as refrigerants. They were later used as propellants in aerosol cans, components in plastic foams, solvents for oils, sterilizers for medical equipment, and other uses. Since these molecules are inert, they can reach the stratosphere after about five years relatively unchanged. In the stratosphere, however, ultraviolet light reaches the CFCs and the carbon-chlorine molecules are broken, releasing chlorine atoms. Chlorine is a catalyst of ozone breakdown, and one chlorine atom may destroy 100,000 ozone molecules before winds can return into the lower atmosphere where they form compounds which are ozone safe. While it was known in 1973 that CFCs can damage ozone, this finding was first published in the scientific journal Nature, the industries relying on CFCs generated $8 billion and employed 200,000 people. Johnson Wax, the fifth largest CFC manufacturer, admirably stopped CFC production, and Oregon became the first state to ban CFCs and aerosols. In 1976, the National Academy of Science agreed that CFCs damage ozone, and consumer concern provided the impetus for ozone-safe products. By 1978, there was a ban on CFCs in aerosols. The reduction of CFC use was resisted by some, and one former head of the EPA even dismissed the CFC ozone connection as a, quote, scare. In the early 1980s, the government stole the phase out of CFCs, which, once CFCs were classified as dangerous, was required by the Clean Air Act. In 1984, the EPA even sued the government for not complying with Clean Air Act regulations. <laughs>